Ah, ah. What's up guys? So today we got another video for you guys. So I have been trying to go for quite a few 1v2s as of recently and a lot of people ask, how is it possible? What can I do to play like that? So I wanted to kind of give you guys a rundown today on a commentary on two quick 1v2s, one a little longer, one shorter, and kind of break down what I'm thinking of when doing these games and maybe pin, you know, take some tips out of it and use it on your own and 1v2 yourself. So let's get right into it. So this game first up here um, is against Russell Druid Destrolock. My DK died rather quickly here. He was a bit under gear and he got one shot by the Chaos Pulse. Um, so this game came down to started up to be a 1v2 here and just kind of to preface I typically will always try to go for the um, healer in the 1v2 only exception is if the DPS continuously puts himself in a bad position especially without a trinket so if I can like get like a stun voodoo doll or like some big monster go um, on him behind his uh, behind a pillar or if it's a uh, melee who just loves to train into thorns, that's the other situation. This was actually pretty cool. He puts out a port there and I actually faked the port. Oh, I was so happy about that one. Um, definitely something that's new to pre patch that I'm get, trying to get better with is watching ports and trying to track them uh, between, uh, especially with locks, because locks can be huge if they get like one coil off and then boom, the whole chain starts. So in this game, I really want to find a go on the rest of Druid. I'm trying my best to try to get to him, but unfortunately it's a Druid and he can just stealth every time okay so i really whenever possible i'm trying to set up good big goes onto the druid um but it's this game it was a little bit tough to get a lot of them going so the only your only option here is to try to go for restelts and put a lot of pressure on the on the dps always 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 try to prioritize going for um, restelts because one you get a stun two you could force someone's trinket really easily especially in a 1v2 people are usually uh, a little more gung-ho on using their trinket and third Rake does a lot of damage out of stealth. If you don't know, Rake out of stealth does 60% more bleed damage than if otherwise, if you were just to um, use it normally. So I'm always trying to get resells whenever possible. Um, and in this case, if the Druid, whenever this Druid goes stealth, I gotta try to put out pressure. It's the only way to force him out, right? So I'm gonna try to get go for restouts off the pet and uh, try to put out a lot, enough pressure to force out the Druid. Druid here starts to try to tank me, I guess. I think he thorns himself too. Yeah, he thorns himself there. So this was, I was trying to go for a huge go on that druid there. Fortunately, he just sat in bear form. I did not want to go in the bear form because I knew I had a lot of damage and I wanted to go for the one shot. A lot of times on healers, I try to get them down a little bit lower. I don't try to 100-0 because I don't want to, you know, risk them getting it down, you know, that one global after the sun. Um, so I was trying to get him a little lower and waiting for him to shift. Unfortunately, he thorns and I couldn't go there. Um, and as for pets here, so when pets are kind of a hassle on you, he puts out another port here, I guess. Yeah, um, I didn't do a good job keeping track of that one. When it comes to pets, especially with Destralox, Aflock, you don't really have pets, so you don't really have this issue. But if they do have, if there's a class with pets, use, I, fortunately I was running Thorns versus, I actually pretty much always run Thorns versus Wrestle Druid um, Destralock. And do my best to just either try to kill the pet with Thorns and bleeds or whatever, or try to uh, go for clones onto him. And I don't even bait it. I just try to get his kick. If he doesn't kick it, the guy, the pet gets cloned and I get the restyle. So here, I, the druid comes out for some reason. I get a monstrous go on him. I got a three stack flame, five combo point bite voodoo doll. Fortunately, he lives. He gets a double, uh, double skin off. He gets away, but I know I'm getting a little bit closer. He still has quite a bit of mana though. So I, I think currently I'm still kind of, I don't really know what I'm going to go, what I want to do here. Um, but we're gonna keep going so I still want to try to force this druid out whenever possible But I know again, he's in stealth. There's nothing I can do I could go for the eye, but that'll put me in the open don't want to put myself in a bad position there So I'm just gonna go for results and try to put out pressure on the lock Try to do as much damage as you can always try to moon fire always always try to moon fire and as well if it's possible even getting off um, uh, Crucible flames when I can but Leads, dots, and line. Do not let him get any uptime on coils or fears or anything. You don't want him to start that chain. If he has coil up, I can't let him get one global because that's it's coil into fear, into stun, into infernal, into dead. Right? So I got a huge go on to this guy here. I forced I had to, I had to resell the heart of the wild was up. I just I, I had to go. I had I wanted to take advantage of this guy being in stealth. And 
Or, the druid does come out here, I see. But I think he goes back in stealth for some reason. I start lagging here for a second. I see the pet around the corner. I think I have four common points ready. If I didn't have common points, I would definitely try to go for common points on the pet before I go in and then go for a main. But I had shadow melt here. So I go for the shadow melt. I got a monstrous flame crit into a big bite with Heart of the Wild up and I just shred him down. So in summary, trying to just delay the game until every possible go that I have. I want to do every big go on the Druid if possible. This was a different scenario. The Druid was playing really passive. He kept trying to stealth. Um, and if that's the case, just put out as much damage as you can, force him out. If he doesn't force you out, you ride this game into dampening and you just keep dotting and rotting, baby. So because our Druid can do a crap ton of damage. If you can get those restelts off, just getting a restelt, dot him up, Moonfire, walk away and just keep doing it. If you do it well, um, only if the, the DPS has Trinket, the only way they can get any pressure, revert, like get any pressure back on you. So as long as he doesn't have Trinket, I just stun. I usually will do like probably a Rake Shred Rip and then Moonfire, walk away. And then um, just rinse and repeat. Just keep getting restouts over and over until he's rotted down. Um, and then if I can get an opening on the Druid, definitely want to pop off on that Druid. In this case, the Druid was kind of strange and he kept staying in stealth. So I just took advantage of that and just roasted the uh, the, uh, the lock with Heart of the Wild up. All right, and then my the other one of the game I wanted to play here. So this game, oh, my, my DK dies here. I couldn't I couldn't keep him up. He was a bit undergeared and they were just destroying him. So here again, this situation, this priest, this is the, you know, a minute into the game. Everyone's still full mana, full health, basically. Um, but again, I want to try to get the, uh, the go onto the healer. Odds are, you know, the hunter's got turtle still. He's got his heal. He's got his pet stuns. And then I know that I can't CC both. I know I can't CC both. I could potentially go for a clone, but that's, you know, two seconds that I'm not doing damage onto the kill target. So I'm going to try to set up on the, on the, um, the priest here, no matter what. So I think here I'm going to pop part of the wild pretty early here and try to force out a trinket. Okay. So I know he has trinket left and I know if I can get his trinket, I can kill him. Right. So I think here I have, I have part of the wild up and a lot of people always ask me about pre-hotting. So this is another scenario when I'm playing kind of, you know, balls deep, trying to play aggressive. I bar pre barkskin pre um, Swiftman, Rejuve, Wild Growth, or not Wild Growth, Life Bloom, and trying to just do is I want to live, I, I want to do the most minimal healing to do the maximum amount of damage. This is kind of always what I'm trying to go for. Do as little of healing as possible so that I could do as much damage. So if I come out living with 1%, I come out living 1%, but it's a win, you know? So in this case, I think I'm going to, uh, since I part of the wild up, you generate calm points a bit faster if you crit. I think I'm going to go for a maim. All right, actually, you know what? Let me break this. So I remember now in this situation. So I didn't think I was going to live. Mark, this guy was doing a crap ton of damage. I knew I wasn't going to live long. So I just wanted to go for the big go. So go for the, the one shot that I do. And I know he has trinket. So I'm going to expect him to trinket the maim, right? So I'm going to open with my, my voodoo doll and maim at the same time. I usually voodoo doll first if there's a little bit of distance because I know there's a little bit of travel time and I can still get the maim at the same time. But the second I press maim, I am ready to press shadow melt. I think that's what goes down here. Okay, so here's the maim and the voodoo doll. I'm gonna expect him to trinket my health's getting a little low, but I can't so I can't risk you know pulling back at all because it's either this kill now or I don't kill because my I'm only killing this guy with voodoo doll. I'll be honest, all right? So I go for that. He trinkets, shadow melt instantly, resum before you can dispel the voodoo doll. And then I just pop them off, shred them down, just barely living. So actually something I messed up on here was this three stack flame. This is something I just noticed when I was watching this back. Whenever you see three stack flame, dispel it. It is like a max stack gushing wound. You cannot let that sit. So I just tried to force heal this. And the best way to kite and heal is put up as many dots as you can, or hots as you can first. So whether that be, you know, stacking up your life bloom, double rejuve, and then try to swift mend, just so you get the maximum benefit of your, um, and snarring ward as well, max benefit of your mastery. And then also, sometimes you might see me, if you ever see my mouse click over like this, um, where is it here? See my mouse click over my frame there? Um, that is when I use my flame to heal myself, because flame will, you know, naturally attack somebody, but if you can actually target a friendly target, you can get the heal off on it. So in literally last itch effort, I, I have to just use my flame. Luckily it was a three stack flame to heal myself up. 
Um, but whenever we're running, just always being able to sh cancel form immediately. Shift travel, cancel, travel, cancel, travel, cancel. And then keep dotting, hiding yourself up. Try to get every single instant hot up. And then try to, if you can, save your, your swift men for a regrowth. Okay, so I think, uh, so as I'm running, I'm just completely just pressing all my hots. You can say rejuve, dispelling when possible, just kiting, kiting, kiting. Because all it takes is one regrowth. I got my swift men, I'm just gonna swift men there. Regrowth here in a second, I believe. Oh, I don't even need to at this point, actually. And then when it comes down to 1v1, um, you know, hunters for specifically, abuse the pet, right? So whether it's thorns on him, if he if he's pulling it back, going for hibernates or roots, and kite him out. You can't. You don't want this guy to get uptime on you because marshmans, okay, if they can connect to you, they can they can kick your butt. But if they can't connect to you, you got this game. Especially if you can, especially if they don't have a pet. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do in this game is just kite him out, go for restouts, probably just uh, either kill the pet or CC the pet, go for the restouts. Because all you need is six seconds. So I think in this case, I just kill the pet. Uh, he misses trap there, it looks like, but he does a sorry at me. I think I'm fine though, full health, I have overgrowth, I'm chilling. So rapid fire, I just kite it out, I go for a restealth. Actually, in this case, I didn't. I just went for damage, I guess. Oh, because I had a maim up here. So I go for the maim, and then I just try to kill him in it. And then, in every 1v1 situation, if you guys see me 1v1 any class, it's always the same thing. Rake, uh, rake, shred, rip, moonfire, sunfire as you're walking away. And if you have a flame, you can throw that in as well. And then just go for the restyle and just rinse and repeat. So in this case, just do that. No one's going to catch you. You know, unless it's like maybe like a really, 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 really good skilled DH or windwalker. Usually most classes aren't going to catch you. Um, so just do your best to kite. At this point, I know I had the advantage on that, and we just go for the 1v2 on that. Alright, so that was kind of a little rundown. Hopefully you can maybe take a few tips out of the, the 1v2s there. Um, and make sure if you guys do like this type of content, I'm trying to switch it up. Make sure to let me know if you want to see anything different or whatever I can do to help you guys out. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like the content. And follow my uh, my stream at twitch.tv slash mmarkers if you enjoy the content for some more live 1v2s and commentary. Have a wonderful day. Peace.